That's long been the stuff of Gothic horror novels and ancient legend, but now scientists have found that a transfusion of youthful blood could reverse the ageing process. Three separate studies conducted on mice have found that the chemical makeup of younger blood has some surprising health benefits. Researchers are now hoping to begin human trials in the next two to three years. Here's our science editor, Tom Clark. But they're all human beings. As fans of the Twilight Saga know, Edward Cullen looks great for his 104 years because he drinks blood. But they also know now he's a good vampire, he only sucks it from animals. I'll meet you at the altar. Comforting then that new scientific evidence for the age reversing powers of blood comes from humble mice. A team at Stanford University in California have found that blood from young lab mice injected into old ones helped rejuvenate a brain memory center also found in humans called the hippocampus. This scan of an old mouse brain shows how a molecule called GDF11 improved blood flow, shown here in color. This work by a separate team at Harvard in Massachusetts showed how the molecule, isolated from young mouse blood, boosted certain stem cells, improving function in the brain and muscles. So does young human blood hold the secret to eternal youth and treatments for heart disease and dementia? The researchers are planning clinical trials as the same molecules are present in us. But they must proceed with caution. Aging may happen to prevent our cells rebelling. Too much meddling with nature could have very undesirable outcomes. Well, I'm joined now by Professor Amy Wagers, who led one of the studies at Harvard University. Um, how far away are you really from trying this in humans? So I think we have obviously a lot to learn still about these pathways. Uh, but I think it's reasonable to anticipate that within the next five years, we'll be uh, building up the first clinical studies of, of the, that'll be directed by our discovery of these proteins in the blood that can actually restore healthy function in older tissues. Why hasn't this been observed in people who get blood transfusions then? So the, the strategies that we use to look for this protein are actually uh, different than your typical blood transfusion where we set up systems where we could constantly provide access to young bloodborne factors uh, to older mice. We also in our study identified a particular molecule that's the active molecule in young blood for some of these beneficial outcomes uh, of exposure to young blood and I think that gives us a a really much more specific handle on the biochemical properties of what's going on in these reversal of aging characteristics. So what, what's your real goal? I mean, are you talking about, you know, eternal life, or are you talking about some sort of chemical that will, you know, slow down specific aging things, whether it's dementia or heart disease or, or, or whatever it might be? Right. So our goal is, is really to provide the maximal number of healthy years of life. So what we would like to do is to improve healthy function of organs uh, for older individuals who often suffer from degenerative disease in, in actually many of the target tissues that we've looked at. And how long, theoretically, could that go on? I mean, are you talking about extending uh, by a few years or are you talking about, you know, people living to 200 right. in, 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 in the next century or what? Right. I think it's very important to, to point out that we have absolutely no idea whether or not these kinds of interventions would have any effect on lifespan at all. What we know is that the muscle, the brain, the heart, they all appear to be more healthy after exposure to these um, proteins that are present when you're young but are gone uh, when you get older. Uh, uh, and, and so what... Yes? No, sorry, go on. Finish your point. Oh. Oh, oh, I was going to say, and, and so really, we're, we're focused on health, uh, not on lifespan. And, and what we would like to do is to, to ensure that tissues are healthy in their functioning for as long as possible. And can you foresee what the problems might be? I mean, might there be sort of runaway cancers or all sorts of things like that? Right, so you're always thinking about in a situation where you're improving the activity of a stem cell population for repair and regeneration, whether you might, on the flip side of things, be affecting the development of tumors. And, and so we've begun to look at that, and so far in our studies we haven't seen any evidence that these animals exposed to this uh, GDF11 protein uh, show any increase in, in cancer, but we obviously need to look more carefully at that and, and for over a longer period of time as Professor, we move forward. Professor, we must leave it there. Thank you very much indeed.